Welcome to Digivac's YouTube channel, Practical Vacuum. So, what I'm going to show you today is uh, vacuum level control with our Model 450. So, we've got this great little Model 450, this little data sheet you can uh, read off the website. And what it does is it actually uh, sits in line with your vacuum pump. It sits between your vacuum pump and your vessel. And it maintains a particular vacuum level, say at 40 torr, 50 torr, anywhere from 2 torr all the way up to 760 torr. Now when you buy it on the website or the standard product, it's this big brick that looks like this. has this uh, has this uh, pretty front with a bunch of switches that are customizable. And in the back, it's quite simple. You just have two connections. So it works as both an instrument, a measurement instrument, and also works as a, a control mechanism. So what you do is you hook up your vessel to be controlled um, to this uh, hose bar, and then you hook up your vacuum pump to this hose bar. And what I'm here to tell you about today is not necessarily the base 450, but a kind of neat solution we came, uh, we came out uh, to meet a customer need. And what this customer wanted is they wanted to be able to actually maintain a ramp rate or vacuum. That is, they wanted to start off at about 760 torr and at 167 torr per hour, a ramp rate of 167 torr per hour, they wanted to slowly evacuate that vessel, probably to not stir up the contents of their process, to about one tour, and then they turn on uh, their other vacuum pumps to uh, go lower. So the spec on this was um, a very slow uh, vacuum evacuation of their vessel down, and then at uh, two tour, what they want to do is then open up and increase the actual orifice size to let their vacuum, their rotary uh, vane vacuum pump work even harder. And then at 0.5 tour, what they wanted to do was actually turn on a blower to um, increase that, uh, that uh, molecular movement. So, what we came up with at Digivac is a hybrid solution between our Model 450 and our, our 801W um, gauge with controls. So, how the whole system works is, um, first we're at atmospheric pressure. Um, and in this one, actually, they had another uh, uh, requirement where they wanted even uh, better measurement accuracy, so we used a capacitance manometer. So here we see a capacitance manometer actually plumbed into this very technical vessel I have. That's our, that's our mock-up control vessel. And also two Varian 531 vacuum tubes uh, in addition to, uh, to give us uh, additional vacuum measurement readings uh, that have accuracy in the military range. So, what we have is our Model 450 that's taking its sensor readings from this one this 1,000 to our capacitance manometer, and then also this customer uh, wanted all of the um, all of the actual control mounted inside mounted actually uh, on their plumbing. So what we did is we took the valve that's native to the controller and uh, brought it out here. We have just um, uh, a quick filtration here to, uh, to make sure any of the contents of the process don't contaminate the pump. And then we also have um, the, uh, the uh, bleed valve here as well. So how this whole system works here is that um, we, uh, and, and right here what we have is the, um, the uh, vessel side, and here we have the pump side. So how it works is when we start, this valve is closed. So these big, pretty fittings aren't actually passing any molecular uh, gas at all. And the only opening is what this valve lets through. So what we do is we start off at 760 torr, and then we turn this reference, this, um, this uh, toggle switch to the reference connector, um, the reference position. And what that does is it starts the process. And what happens there is the process goes, starts at whatever reading you're at, say 760 torr, and then slowly evacuates that vessel till it gets down um, to about uh, two, between one and two tour. So this is going on right now. You can see we're actually about 559 tour. It's been going about an hour. Um, so what will happen is when this gets all the way down to um, two tour, what's going to happen is that this vacuum gauge, which has relays on it, is going to activate this switch. So with this, with this um, actually very large valve with all, with a two inch over a two inch orifice, it's going to open up, and all and this whole area is going to be available to for the evacuation. So when this when this opens, what's going to happen is it's going to be able to evacuate a little bit quicker than it will 
um, be able to evacuate through this uh, 3 8 uh, inch in their diameter. Now what happens at 0.5 torr, um, there, the other second set point here is going to go off, and then what's going to happen is a blower is actually going to turn on, which is going to allow it to get even lower, and the customer is going to start their process. And then we want to finish up this whole process. What the customer would do is then flip this switch up, and then actually put it in purge mode, and then the whole system will come back up gracefully. So this is an example of our, a few of our products, our 801BW and our Model 450 working in tandem to achieve this, uh, this endpoint customer need. Now before this, my understanding is the customer actually would use valves to achieve this kind of ramp rate. And just to let you know kind of what we're doing here, we have another our, uh, device here, uh, is our Model 201, and what that's doing is it's actually uh, measuring the vacuum uh, as it uh, goes up and com comes down so we can actually graph it. So if we were to look over here on our computer monitors, this is actually logging to a web browser here, you can actually see that we're kind of coming down nice and easy at that 168 uh, tour per hour rate. And now that we're bleeding, of course, we're, uh, we're coming back up. So what we've showed you is a custom um, example of some of uh, Digivac ingenuity um, as it applies to uh, vacuum control and specifically um, vacuum uh, uh, level control. And we invite you to come and call us up and, uh, and allow us to participate in your solution. Thank you and happy vacuuming.